In this video, we're looking at how we can create a fan chart with inside Excel. A fan chart or an uncertainty chart, as I like to call them, are a way of displaying historical data along with a prediction about future values. However, because those future values are uncertain, then we tend to show the range of possible results as a fan to show the full range of what could happen. The fan also ranges in color so that the more likely results, which are in the middle of the fan, are a darker color and the least likely outcome are shown in the lighter portions, which are on the outside of the fan. So how do we create one of these inside Excel? Well, if you'd like to work along with this video, you can download the example file and there are links in the descriptions box below. So once you've done that, if you're ready, let's get started. Here in the example file, we have an Excel table, which is called data. It is possible to build this visualization without a table. However, tables are perfect for holding data. So that's the method that I've chosen to use. The first column is date. And then after that, we have the actual value for each date. The next column, we have a forecast value for the future dates. We then have a minimum column, a maximum column, a base column, and a fan size column. At the top in row three, we have some cells that we will use within our calculations. So let's start here on cell C3. Here, we just want to pick up what the total forecast value is. So as we're in an Excel table, I'm going to type equals and then use an index function. I'll select my forecast column and then I want the last row from that forecast column. So I'll use rows, select my column again, close the row, close the index and press return. So that's calculated 8.2, which as you can see is the same value as we have at the base of the table. Next, we will input our min and max values. So the forecast value is 8.2. So let's say the minimum was six and the maximum is 10. How you calculate your minimum and maximums is entirely up to you. Okay, now let's calculate the minimum value of each of our fans. I'll start here in cell D19. I'll type equals and then open bracket. So I'll enter D3 minus C3. Press F4 to lock both of those in. Close that bracket. So that shows a value of 2.2, which is the difference between our minimum and our forecast. So by the time we get to the end of our table, then there should be a difference of 2.2 between the forecast and the minimum. We have 12 periods of forecast data which means this 2.2, we want 12 twelfths of that data. For the period before, we want 11 twelfths and 10 twelfths and 9 twelfths and so on, which means this first value here on the 31st of January should just have 1 twelfth of that 2.2. So to do that, we'll divide by the count, open bracket, and we'll select everything from the forecast column. So count will count all the numbers. So we have 12 periods, so that will divide by 12. We then want to multiply that by the number of periods of data that we have. So we'll enter multiply, and we'll do a count again. Open bracket, and this time I need to create a dynamic range. So I'll use index of the forecast column and select the first row. I'll close that bracket and then select the current row. And then I'll close the count with a final bracket. So here we have created a dynamic range. So index picks up the first cell from the forecast column, so cell C7. And then we're picking up the current row that we're on, so C19, which means this function will undertake a count from C7 to C19. As there's only one value at that point, it will return one. In the next row, it will return two because it will be referring from C7 
down to C20. The next row, it will be three and so on. So we've got our difference divided by 12, being the number of periods, multiplied by an increasing number as it moves down the table. So as you can see, we end up with zero in those first rows, and then it increases until it gets to 2.2 by the end. So I'm just going to take that, add in the forecast column at the start, and then press return. I'm now going to select that formula and move it across into the max row. Just drag that across so it picks up the maximum value and then I'll press return. So you'll see that by the time we get to the bottom, we have the values of six and 10, with the forecast of 8.2, which is the same as what we had at the top here. So we're now going to calculate the base value, which is actual plus the minimum. So that base is the blank area underneath our fan chart. Then we want to calculate how big each of our fans should be. So let's say we want nine fans within our chart. Therefore our calculation will be the maximum minus the minimum divided by the number of fans. Press F4 to lock that in and press return. Okay, we've now calculated everything that we need. So I'm going to select the date column, the base column, and the fan size column. And from the insert menu, I'm gonna come down to a 2D area chart and select a stacked area. Now we've actually got nine fans within our visualization. So we've got one fan in there, that's the orange one. So I'm going to click on my chart and I'm going to paste in eight more. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm going to delete the legend. I'm going to delete the chart title. And then I'm going to hold Alt while I just get this chart into place. So Alt will help it to snap to the grid. Now it's all just about formatting. So I'm gonna select this first item, which is the base. Right click and go to Format Data Series. For that data series, I want no fill and no line. So that now creates the transparent area underneath the chart. Then I want to select the middle value with inside the fans. So we've said nine fans, which means there's four on top, four below, and one in the middle. For that, I'm going to select a solid fill. The color I want to use, I've selected. And I also want a solid line using the same color. Next, I can format the fans using the same color, but increasing the level of transparency. So the next fan, will be the same color with 20% transparency. And the next one, same color, 40%. And then the last one is 80%. And then we need to do the same using the values above. So we've now created our fan chart. And then as we get more periods of data, so let's say the 31st of January data comes in and the value is nine, we can change our forecast and our chart will update automatically to show that new value and to ensure those fans still spread out correctly between the minimum and maximum values. Also, because we've used an Excel table, if we get new data, the following month and we get a new forecast we can then insert that into the table and the chart will update to reflect that new data so that's it for this video that's how we create a fan chart or an uncertainty chart inside excel 
you liked this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment, and I'll catch you next time. Mm -hmm.